Hello fellow crafters, this is Onvator, back for another crafting tutorial. Now I'm really sorry guys, uh, I've been super busy with work lately, so I wasn't able to upload any tutorials for over two weeks. But things are a little more cool right now, so I'm definitely able to show you some stuff. Thinking about RPG, is there something more epic than, you know, climbing up into a tower to face off a deadliest foe? Oh wait, I know actually scaling the goddamn tower. And I've got three words for you. Modular, climbable, ivy. So what I'm gonna do is to adapt it to one of my builds. Uh, I want to be able to use it, so I'm going to adapt it to this tower I showed in another previous video in a showcase. But of course, the system is the same. You could use it and uh, you know adapt it to any kind of wall or tower you may have done. Anyway, let's quit stalling and let's get to the craft. Okay, we're going to be working on baking parchment paper, and I'm going to be cutting the sheet in half. Having measured the width of the tower, I'm going to draw some lines, and I'm going to make sure that everything I do, everything I craft, stays between these lines. I'm going to be using this kind of wool to make the thickest part of the ivy, and I'm going to use this linen string for the thinner parts. I'm going to use Mod Podge to seal them. And don't hesitate to be generous with the Mod Podge. However, we're going to mix some hot water with it, just to make sure that the Mod Podge actually sinks in into the fibers of the wool. Otherwise, the wool won't uh, harden up as much. Once the wool is fully soaked up, I'm going to untwine some part of the thread, just to imitate the ramifications of the ivy. Then I'm gonna display them on the baking parchment paper, just making sure to set on the bottom the thickest part of the threads. You can also use some thinner threads. Here I'm using the linen uh, strings to uh, entangle them with the wool. And I'm gonna display all of it and I'm gonna make sure to entangle both uh, thin and uh, thick strings. Try not to overlap too much uh, the thick threads of wool. So this is gonna take some time. If I remember correctly, I took about half an hour to get this result. You could do it faster with other techniques, uh, but you won't have the same render. Uh, first, I tried doing it with uh, hot glue, with a glue gun. The result wasn't very convincing. First off, it was way too flexible, it wasn't that hard, and also the texture wasn't that interesting. What I'm going for is uh, really for thick ivy, and thick ivy actually looks a little bit like, uh, like actual wood. So I wanted something with a texture, I wanted something uh, that was entangled, that was kind of braided sometimes. So I tried with this technique, the render is way better even if it takes a little time to set it up. So leave it to dry. You can also use a hair dryer if you want to speed up the process. So I want this to be adapted to my modular system. So what I'm gonna do is draw separations on the baking parchment paper just to remember where I'll have to cut. Okay, now we're going to be using some toothpicks, and I'm going to cut the tip of the toothpicks. I'll reuse the rest later. So using some strong glue and an old X-Acto knife, I'm actually going to uh, stick them, I'm going to jam them uh, into the thickest threads of, uh, of wool. And I'm going to put six of them on each piece. Then using some wood glue, I'm gonna secure the toothpick on the craft, making sure that the bond is uh, extra sturdy. Then afterwards, as you can see, I decided to add another coat of Mod Podge, just to make sure the craft would be rock solid.
When everything is dry, time for paints. Ivy, provided it gets enough sunlight and nutrients, can actually get pretty thick. And in that case, its color can get pretty damn close to wood. So we're gonna go with a base coat of brown. Then I added some white and some yellow to the mix, just to make the mid-tones, and I'm gonna do a dry brush. Then adding gradually some whites, you can do the highlights. Just remember we're doing dry brushing, so don't be too heavy on the paint. The lighter the color gets, the lighter your stroke has to be. Then finally we're gonna do a green wash. But we're gonna make sure only to put some green on the thinnest threads uh, there are. Because the thinner ones are actually younger shoots, so they're definitely gonna be more green. So we're gonna go for a little experiment. I'm going to use some shredded parsley to mimic the leaves of the ivy. Of course you could find other alternatives, but I wanted something the right size, the right color, and uh, I didn't want to buy pre-made leaves. Often they are too big or too expensive, so I definitely want to try with this. So what I'm doing is putting some clear glue over the twines. I'm gonna put more glue and more leaves where the shoots are more juvenile, more green. So I'm putting some leaves almost everywhere, but it's not a regular coating. There are some bushes here and there. Then I'm going to seal it with some varnish that I am actually vaporizing onto the piece. Okay, when everything is dry, you can start cutting the different pieces. And if everything's all right, it will just detach itself pretty easily from the baking parchment paper. Right there. It works just fine. So here you can see the results. Looks pretty good to me pretty detailed. Of course you've got some excess of glue some places so you gotta remove the Mod Podge or the glue that might have sticked uh, both to the paper and to the, um, to the craft. Okay now we'll be using some thin translucent plastic. Usually you can scavenge them if you order food. Usually the little Tupperwares uh, you get are made of this cheap uh, plastic. So what I'm gonna do is this, uh, this piece is gonna be able to be set, to be jammed onto the, the pieces of my tower, inspired by Wylock uh, tiles. It's the same system, so um, if you've got those tiles, you could use uh, this kind of system. So once I cut them the right size, I'm gonna make some marks. Just make sure to score the plastic, but not to go all the way through. What you can do is use the hairdryer to uh, heat up the plastic, it'll get a lot more flexible and won't break. Because we want to bend the piece in place and not break it. So when all the pieces are done, I'm gonna check if they're the right size uh, with one piece of my tower just to make sure they can be settled uh, anywhere on the tower. Okay, now I'm gonna glue them. Just to make sure I don't do any mistakes, I'm gonna glue these pieces of plastic to the ivy 
uh, while being set on the tower. And all you have to do is do the same for all pieces. Okay, only one thing left to do. Take your miniature, a thin piece of plastic, and cut a base slightly larger than the base of the miniature. Then take a paper clip and unfold it using small pliers. Then fold the endpoints this way, still using the pliers. Separate them a little bit and then glue them to the base. You can also hide the bottom of the base if you want something a little more neat. And finally, using the small glue gun, you're gonna do a precise edge all around. This is gonna be a parapet preventing the miniature from falling off. There you go, easy to make and pretty damn effective. So this is the final craft uh, once uh, set onto the tower. I think it looks really good. Uh, the only concern I have is the parsley I used. I'm not sure it will hold uh, time. You never know with uh, fresh leaves, uh, but I've uh, sealed it pretty well. So I think it will last, but only time can tell. So. If you've got a better alternative for leaves, uh, feel free to, to do so and tell me if you've got a better alternative. Um, uh, you could also imagine having uh, several of them uh, set on each, uh, each side of the tower uh, to make sure that the characters could actually, you know, climb up and pass from one side to another. But I think it looks pretty good. Of course, this kind of vine, this kind of ivy uh, wouldn't really be found on, uh, you know, well-groomed, uh, well-kept castles. But, uh, you know, running RPG, you do what you want. Now for the coolest part. Take a miniature, take one of your holders you made, set it onto it. And there you go. Your miniature is going to be able to climb up. But of course, it's going to be easy to set it, but for the player, it's going to be a lot harder. The higher he will get, the harder the dexterity check is going to be. As you can see, you can climb up very easily. It's... Can, you can even go from left to right, and you can climb up to there, 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 using the two sticks uh, we've set on top of the belt. The highest I, uh, I've put some toothpick is there. I didn't want to put them higher, because there it's really fragile. Besides, it's pretty logical uh, concerning ivy. I mean, even if the ivy is really dense and really, uh, you know, hard, uh, from the bottom, it's definitely going to be uh, become thinner uh, on the top, so I didn't want to get too high. Besides, you could imagine just having to do another dex check, uh, last one, the hardest one, to get to the top, or the player could use a rope or something like that. But it's definitely going to be interesting during gameplay, because uh, obviously it's going to be difficult. I mean, you can even str um, throw in some rain or some, uh, some wind, and it's going to be harder. There could be another character... Uh, actually uh, pursuing the other or helping it or helping him maybe um, you can have one player falling down if he fails a dexterity check and uh, and uh, try to catch himself before crashing on the stones below uh, he could be helped by another character there could be defenders actually noticing the adventures and uh, throwing stones at them and they'll have to evade it uh, yeah it can be fun, it can definitely be fun. Uh, so, um, so there you go. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, if you like it, uh, please like, share, subscribe, uh, give me uh, some feedback in the comments, and I'll see you later for another crafting vid.